Hi team, so now we've run through the, uh, the specifications and also the whys you'd want a, a lithium or an Enerdrive VTEC to be quite particular. Uh, so let's take a look at the installation side. Now it's a battery, so it's a pretty simple thing you would think. However, if you want the most life out of your battery and a trouble-free experience, let's run through some of the key important details there. Now, with my Sirius hat on and all that, I always say that when it comes to installation and all that, refer to the applicable standards. So yes, there are standards for how batteries should be installed, either in the marine or the RV application. So refer to those standards. Um, they do cover off a lot of key detail um, that I won't run through today. Um, we'll run through the bullet points, uh, but always refer to those applicable standards. Second thing is, refer to our installation manual. Um, those things that most men don't read and all that, including myself. Um, However, in my job here, it's my job to um, review them and update them and all that. So take a look at them. There's a lot of useful information there along the spe specifications, but also the installation. So two key things there. So that's my serious side done there now. Now, a few key points that I touched on earlier on when we were talking about the specification side is our BTEC range of batteries uh, don't have an IP rating. So what does that mean? That means in key, they're not to be installed in a wet area. So what I'm talking about there in a wet area is can't be installed in an open tray, for example, off a four-wheel drive. Can't be installed in an under tray battery tray or box that's not sealed, for example. Uh, or can't be installed on the open deck of your tinny uh, in the marine application, that side. If they have a little splash and all that on them, that's okay. Um, but if they get water continually on them or into the, where all the um, fixings are for the serviceable lid there, um, that can have water ingress. So again, not designed for wet areas. The other one here is crossing off the negatives before we move on the positives, is they also are not for under bonnet application. So because of the BMS in there, and we want you to have a long trouble free experience with a BTEC range. So we'll always be erring on the side of caution. So the next side with the installation is, you want the battery to be mounted close to your electronic equipment. So for example, we're talking about the inverters there, keep the cabling short. Also for the chargers as well, you want to keep the cabling short. The longer the cable run means the larger diameter. Um, again, in all our manuals, you'll see there where if the cable run gets too long, it's actually not even recommended. Not only do you have to go to a larger gauge cable, but again, not recommended because we'll get voltage drops. So try and mount the battery close to your chargers and your inverters as you can. Now, the next one is, we touched base on it before, a great benefit of our BTEC Generation 2 batteries is they come with the tray and the mounting strap. Making installation very simple, you don't have to come up with all these strange right angle brackets or tie down straps and all that. You'll see pressed into the bottom of the brackets are the fixing points. Now always use suitable fasteners for what you may be drilling into or bolting into. Ideally you want to bolt them down um, rather than relying on screws in timber. So if you can try and bolt them through a, uh, a surface that you're mounting on. They are lighter than a normal AGM battery, but again, if you're bouncing through the off-road and all that, you still have a lot of motion, a lot of sort of G-forces moving the battery in all different orientations. So ensure that tray is securely fixed down. So ensure that they are securely mounted down with the tray. Now they come with a strap. Again, the smaller batteries come with a single strap. The larger batteries like our new 300 amp G2, and also when we release our 24 volt 150 amp G2 battery come with two straps there. So it is as simple as mounting that down there. Now I always try to remember, especially because this is going to be loose. There's an area there for the strap to run freely underneath so you can adjust it later on. Or if you forget to put it underneath first before you mount it down, you can feed it through. Simply pop the battery in there, run the strap over the top, and just like any of your normal tie down straps and all that you might use for your fridges and all that, Tighten it up nice and tightly, and you're good to go. It's as simple as that mounting a BTEC battery. As I said, no mounts that you've got to do over the tops or sides or coming up with right angle brackets or anything like that. It's all supplied. Nice, simple solution there. So you can tidy up your strap and all that, see people tuck them in really nicely there, but we'll just leave that one hanging for the moment. On the cabling side there as well, um, again, refer to all the manuals, either for the Enerdrive equipment that you're installing, or if you are using another brand's uh, inverter or battery charger, for example, refer to the cable sizing. A lot of the tech phone calls we get are based around two things, 
poor connections, which we'll talk about, inappropriately sized battery cabling. So again, equipment like the inverters and the chargers and all that need a good voltage supply to them. So refer to those details, off an inverter or off a charger, off the cable sizing. Another one here to remember is, it actually comes from a, the marine side of standards, is you shouldn't have any more than four conductors going on to a battery or onto any connection point for that matter of fact. The reason is each time you will get a tiny, tiny bit of voltage drop through there, but also increases the risk of bad connection, therefore heat um, and possible failure after that. That's why we do supply the bolts pretty short. Two reasons, one, so you don't bottle them out if you only have a single thin conductor there. But secondly, is to try and limit people. Now we do see a lot of people going to Bunnings and buying larger M8 bolts uh, and have a nice big stack there, but definitely not recommended. If you do have more negatives or positives, then the four, um, for example, or more than you can fit under the bolt there, it's always recommended to then run it to a buzz bar, for example, or to a fuse block if it's on the positive side there. Another common mistake we see as well is comes down to our, our good practice here. You should always layer the cables with the heaviest or the highest current draw closest to the battery there. Again, it just makes very good contact with the top of the battery there, and you should then stagger it up to the top that it's the lightest conductor on top there, for example. So that's there is the ideal way. Don't do it like that. A lot of the situations there, you'll actually see it doesn't work very well because that large lug can't actually sit down onto the smaller lug. So again, you'll either have issues there where you won't get um, good mating, good surface area there. So always stagger them, largest closest to the battery there and to the lightest loads on top there. So keep that in mind there when you're doing the installations. Now another part of the installation side of things that we quite often get asked is, can I connect my BTEC batteries in parallel? So the answer to that question is yes. Um, you can connect uh, two of them up in parallel, for example. Now there are a few key requirements and we do actually have specific videos on how to connect BTEC batteries up in parallel. So take a look at those ones. But again, I'll just touch base on the basics. It is also outlined with some nice diagrams in our installation manual as well. So if you are connecting them up in parallel, the key things is to keep the parallel link cables. So here we've got our pre-made ones as equal size and also diameter based on the largest current draw. So if you do have, let's say a, a 2000 watt inverter, you're gonna have minimal um, of 70 mil size cable between those linking ones. And with those ones there, if I just rip these ones apart, for example, you obviously then want to go from one battery to the other to the other. So again, they're equal length and adequately sized and both diameters are the same. Now when you do actually run them off like that, again, one battery should have the positive connection coming off it and the other one will have the negative connection coming off it here. So just keep that in mind. Again, for detailed information, refer to the installation manual or refer to our separate installation um, video on how to do BTEX in parallel. Now, another question we get asked a lot, and I did cover this off in the DC to DC video that we did on the installation side, is if you're using a BTEC lithium battery, there's no need to connect up the temperature sensor to the negative side of the battery. So again, if you're using an Enerdrive AC charger, one of our e-power range, for example, or if you're using our DC to DC charger, there's no need to connect up that negative um, sense cable because the lithiums don't actually derate based on temperature. If the temperature does get very low or very high, again, the battery will shut off, but it's not like a lead acid battery where the charging voltage is derated according to the voltage of, uh, sorry, the temperature of the battery. So a couple of key ones there. Um, so that really covers off the basics. The installation side, as I said, refer to the applicable standards, refer to our uh, owner's manual. The owner's manual, the always the most up-to-date is on our website, or they do come with the batteries there as well. Refer to the applicable standards, make the most of this great tray that comes with the system and all that. Um, it's just absolutely ideal. It keeps um, the installation nice, simple, trouble-free, saves you doing another 10 runs to Bunnings, for example. And that covers off the installation side of our VTEC batteries.